one of the oops concept is polymorphism we can achieve polymorphism using method overloading and method overriding let's go to IntelliJ and learn one by one so I'm going to create a new class new Java class I am going to name the classes calculator okay and I'm going to create first of all we are going to learn about method method overloading okay why we are learning this because this is an oops concept of polymorphism what is polymorphism poly means many morphism means forms that means we can do many forms we can do the same thing in many ways so first of all we are going to learn method overloading i am going to create a method sum okay so put a bracket and put a curly braces so the name of the method is sum and I am going to give the return type as void. So I don't want to return anything. Now inside the curly braces, I am going to print the statement. This is my method sum, right? So used for finding sum. So what I did, I created a method sum. Now I am going to do, what I am going to do is that I am going to copy the same method and I am going to paste it. Of course, we are going to error, getting error because we are using the same method right but we can use the same method in different ways that is polymorphism we can do the same thing in different ways how we can do that either by changing the number of parameters inside the bracket we are changing or we are giving parameter so i'm going to give index here so what i did i changed i changed number of parameter if i'm going to copy paste the same method and if i'm going to give two parameters see what i am doing here is i am using the same method but in different ways okay so if i am going to create a main method and okay for calling the method i need to create an object of calculator so i am going to create an object of calculator calculator object equal to new calculator so this is the way for creating object now when I put write object and when I put a dot, see, I'm getting the methods, some, some, some. See, the method name is same, but the number of parameters is different. So that we are achieving polymorphism. We are doing the same thing in different ways by changing the number of parameters. So if I'm calling the first, this sum without any parameter, then I'm going to get the first thing. And inside the bracket, I'm going to, or inside the statement, I'm going to change, okay? method and this is the third method okay so when i calling the first method when i when i am calling it the method without any parameter i will get the first method right so when i run the program i will be getting the response the first response see i am getting used to a finding sum that is the first method so this is the way for achieving method overloading by changing number of parameter now one more way by which we can achieve method overloading how we can do that i'm going to remove these two methods see i'm having the method sum and i'm going to copy the same method okay and i'm going to paste it here of course i'm going to getting error because the same thing duplicate thing we are doing right now what we did we changed the parameter first right now we are going to change data type okay data type of the parameter we are going to change data type of the parameter here the data type of the parameter it is int integer now here i am going to give double see so we achieved method overloading by changing the data type uh, int method and this one i am going to give double method okay now if i am going to use the object and if i am going to call the sum method i need to pass the parameter either integer or double value if i'm going to pass an integer value and if i'm going to run the program i will be getting the int method right see int method we are achieving polymorphism or we are achieving method overloading by changing data type now i have a question can we achieve method overloading by changing the return type return type so initially we change the data type integer and double are the data types right inside the bracket Instead the parameter we are changing. Now I am using the okay. If I am going to remove this method and if I am going to copy 
this method and paste it here see we are using the same method we are getting error what i'm going to do is that i'm going to change the return type instead of void i'm going to write int so is this possible no it is not possible to achieve method overloading by changing the return type we can achieve method overloading by two ways first one by changing number of by changing number of parameters parameters inside the bracket that is one way we can achieve method overloading the another one is by changing the data type data type okay data type of parameter by changing return type it is not possible so this is the way by which we can achieve method overloading now we are going to learn about automatic promotion in in method overloading how we can achieve or, or there is an automatic promotion happening in method overloading that i will show you okay i am going to use the same method void sum and inside the bracket i am going to give one parameter and inside the curly braces i am going to write i'm going to write um, what will i write i will write sum method okay now i create the object of the calculator class then put dot i'm calling the sum method i need to pass any integer value here i'm passing 5 then i will get the response so 5 is an integer value okay suppose think that instead of int here the data type it is double okay so i am passing integer here but i have only method of double at that time compiler will do automatic promotion int to double i think i hope you understood right we are passing integer value here but we are only having method of double so compiler will do the automatic promotion suppose think that um, here there is integer itself and inside the bracket instead of passing an integer value i am going to pass a character see this is a character right but i am not getting any error why because compiler will do the automatic promotion i hope you understood now i am going to do method overloading by parent and child class i will show you i am going to create a method um, display okay and inside that i am going to give the data type object and i will be printing result okay so put a curly braces and write s out and i will write object result now i am going to copy the same method that's what we are going to do in method overloading and i am going to achieve method overloading by changing data type instead of object i am going to write string okay and here i will be writing string result so i have two methods the same method i am using that is method overloading by changing the data type now if i'm going to use the object and if i'm going to call the display method i'm writing sum as the argument see as soon as i write i can see a blue color here that means this method is going to get called so if i run the program i will be getting string result see this method is called now here instead of writing uh, sum i'm going to create a new object okay I'm going to create a no, new object. See, the blue color changes to here. So, when I run the program, I will be getting object result. Now, what I'm going to do, listen carefully, okay? I'm going to give null. At that time, which method will be getting called? Whether this method or this method. Here, we can see a blue color, so you'll understand that this method is getting called. So, when method overloading is done using um, the parent and child class, child class will give the or child class will get the priority child class will get priority okay. if both parent class and child class is there at that time child class will get the priority so when i run the program i will be getting string result see if you are passing null null is object will be can be also null and string can be also null but if there are two methods then child class will be getting the priority now think that this is string buffer okay here both are child class of object class okay object is the parent class object is the parent class string and string buffer are string and string buffer are child class so when 
of parent and child is there child will get priority when both child are there we will get ambiguity error so we can't use that and one more thing see we are getting error here so when we are writing or when we are doing method overloading at compile time itself we will understand whether we are getting error or not or at the compile time itself we can understand this so method overloading is compile time polymorphism okay compile time polymorphism polymorphism we are learning about polymorphism in java and we are achieving polymorphism using method overloading and method overloading is a compile time polymorphism now we can learn about method overriding now we are going to learn method overriding so i am going to create a new java class and i am going to write the name of the class as mobile okay and we are going to learn method overriding uh, for that i am going to create a method the method name is camera okay now inside the curly braces i am going to write what i will write used for video recording okay now what i am going to do is that i am going to create a child class i'm going to create a child class class i will write iphone extends mobile class now put curly braces okay now i'm not going to do anything the method is there inside the parent class mobile is the parent class and iphone is the child class now i'm going to create one more class new java class i'm going to write the name of the class as customer and i am going to write the main method there now i am going to create an object of iphone iphone object equal to new iphone and object dot i am going to see i am getting the camera method why i am getting the camera method here because mobile is the parent class okay so when i write object dot camera what i what will be the response i am going to get i will be getting the response this one used for video recording so when i run the program let's see what the output we are going to get used for video recording but this is the response of the parent class right but my iphone needs something new like an updation at that time what we can do is that we can override this method okay copy the method and paste it here my iphone camera needs something special so i can override the method i'm going to write cinematic mode recording okay. now when i am calling this method camera method what will be the response i am going to get instead of used for video recording i will be getting cinematic mode recording so what we did here is method overriding we are using the same method but the implementation is different okay now suppose think that my iphone need both the things like cinematic mode recording and also used for video recording both these things we need at that time we can use the super keyword dot camera see super keyword we can use at that time the parent class method will be also called and the child class method will be also called so if you run the program now we can see we are getting both these responses used for video recording and cinematic mode recording so super keyword is used to get the super class method super class is the parent class super keyword is used to get the super class method so this is what is known as method overriding so if i'm going to remove this now we manually did it right so i'm going to right click generate and see override methods the short form is control plus o if i click on that and it is giving the option camera camera is the method and these are the methods of object class we don't want to look at that now this is the method that we created we are going to override this camera method click on ok see we are getting the override annotation this is the way we can create overridden method and here we can see the super keyword why we are getting super keyword super keyword is used in order to call the parent class method we can change the implementation here in the child class method cinematic mode okay if super keyword is there then parent class method will be also called so this is what is known as method overriding method overriding we 
learned in method overloading right in method overriding what is happening is that it is a runtime polymorphism method overloading and method overriding is coming under polymorphism we are doing the method in many forms okay so method overriding means when we run the program then only we will be understanding which method is called right so it is a runtime polymorphism is if if you want to remember this thing that override r r overriding is runtime polymorphism overloading is compare time polymorphism 